Um, so your next goal in a, in a normal run, your next goal is to set up power. You've got green science done, we want to set up power. There's a shopping list you need for power. The first item on the shopping list is power poles. So when you finish setting that up, all the excess wood you have, come get your power poles. If you have too many inserters, there's an extra box right here. You can put all your yellow or several hundred of your yellow inserters into this box. Just to clear your inventory. You should have 32 black arms, which if you check our hotbar, we already have them because we grabbed them earlier. You should be able to grab 10 pumps. You should be able to grab 32 boilers, 70 steam engines. You actually only need 64, but it's going to be 70 in the box. Underground pipe and regular pipe. You can now stamp the next phase of the print, which is 1-4. Stamp that into existence. Um, and then build everything that shows up here on your way out of the base. So all of these new entities that just showed up, take your time, and then drag this belt out of the base with you as you go. If you do not do this and you've already left the base, not the end of the world. Done. Are we doing God Lab? Yep. Oh yeah, we're researching it right now. So. Uh, you're panicking about God Lab. You're going to do power, but you're you're certain there's no way you're gonna have enough steel. There's pick up all of this iron, place a bunch of furnaces down. Just like this. Feed as much iron into these furnaces as you can. Feed coal into these furnaces. Get all of that moving as fast as possible. There. And then keep this iron moving, because when we come back, we're going to try to force a train out as fast as we possibly can, which is going to need steel. So we're going to make as much of that steel as possible, and then we're going to get coal for power. So we set up steel. We'll do Golap after power. I will hopefully have enough time. In your blueprint book, you've got a, sorry, Derek's Beginner Prince. You've got a book called Power Build. This is going to have two options, a long one like this, and a chunky one like this. Go somewhere at the back of your base where there's nothing in the way. So back here is fine and print this in. Again, do not print it up here above that line. That is our line we're not going to screw with. Put it down here out of the way. That needs a full lane of coal. I'm going to go get a full lane of coal, which can I get that out of here? Maybe. So um, if the coal is a little tight. So for example, our blueprint book doesn't quite fit without mixed mining. It's really, really close. We're just gonna build it by hand. When building by hand, you can always fit in a little bit more. So just do straight lines, much as possible. Again, watch for mixed. So I built here because it's not mixed. Here would be. There's a little bullshit piece of iron here. Don't get tricked. So we have a certain amount of drills here. Let's see how many. 34. That's actually well in excess of what we need. We need 30. So let's see. 30. Excellent. Um, place your power poles between the drill lines. Do not put them where arrows are. Great. And then we are going to drag out like this. Drag like this. And you've got these two lines that are now unbalanced. Just put a splitter and push them together like that. I don't think I need to get too heavily into lane balancing in this. Just make sure that your 30 drills make a line of yellow, uh, make a full line of belt. So the easiest thing you could possibly do is take two lanes that are completely imbalanced. So this one is almost all side loading. This one is reasonably balanced, but together collectively, they make 30 drills. Put them both into a splitter, and then all you're doing is the two lines that come out of this splitter have to kiss. So I could do it like this, and then run it. That's the This is exactly the same functionally as this. All you're doing is the two lines that exit this splitter have to kiss each other. So zip and zip. They're kissing, and then run it. That is now perfectly balanced as long as it had 30 drills. Ki exactly. Now kiss. We can do the next part of the tech list. I'm going to release the tech list in a document so you can see it, but automation two, uh, steel furnaces, 
We want fluid handling. We want pump jacks and uh, lab speed. So we need to bring water to our power. Again, I don't think that... I think that people that play Factorio and are trying 100% run probably have a decent understanding of a lot of these very basic concepts, like setting up power. So it's pretty simple. Build the blueprint and make sure the power is connected. So the power on the left side has to touch the power on the right side, and the power on the right side is going to touch the main power in the base. If you go to the map view, you can see I've already made a mistake. Oh, I haven't made a mistake. I just have to build this, and I have to build this. So map view... Blue power line touches the main base. Great, it's legal. Build this however you want for speed. I have gone through many versions. Right now, I'm settled in on the same thing Anti does, which is steam engine drag, steam engine drag, boiler drag, steam engine, steam engine. Then when he's done that, power poles, hotkey to pipes, drag. Power poles, hotkey to pipe, drag. Power poles, hotkey to pipe, drag. Then he does the arms. Something I found for a long time that worked well for me was doing the poles in the pipe first. Because then I found I was less likely to miss drag the steam engines. So let's see what that looks like. So now when I'm dragging the steam engines, it's a little more awkward because I have to get out of the way of the blueprint because I can't run down the center of it anymore. But at the very least, when I do this drag, let's say I accidentally push in here, it won't place anything. So when I make mistakes, it's not letting me make mistakes. It's like forcing me to not screw up. Whereas doing it freehand without the pipe down first can make a lot of mistakes happen. Uh, might be worth mentioning if you place the long steam engines, you still need two pumps in. Yeah, that's actually a great a great point. So there's another blueprint uh, on the uh, power build book here. So this is the wide one, but there's a long one. Let's just say you had the long one here. You still yeah, need to get two attention. pumps worth of water into this. And they can't be done like this. So let's just say I ran this one pump like this and then pushed them both in here. That is no good. It has to be split at the very start. So you want it to be split like this, then run your pipe like this and connect it at the source. Again, your connection where the two pipes meet has to be as close to the boiler as possible. Do not... Do it any other way, as close to the boiler as possible. Okay, right now we should chop about 200-ish wood of trees, ish, and then we're gonna go build a train. We are going to come here, and we're gonna scoop iron, we're gonna scoop all this steel, we have stone, set up a bunch of assemblers, make engines, half fill, you're also going to need rail. Set up rail. Oh, for which we need sticks. Set up sticks. Okay, train's coming out. Uh, okay, train's done. I just want to showcase Godlap in the slowest possible way. Yeah, you're right. It's only four. Simple. Godlap. Is Godlap a run killer because the timing is tight or because it's easier for it to get? Because the timing is super tight. Why didn't you use steel in the main base? So, the, literally the next thing we're going to do, so you can stamp the next part of the print now, because we're going to build steel. So, steel production is made right here. But if you are a little too slow, like I was this run, it might be really, really tight to get steel up and running prior to needing the train. So, if again, if you needed to, you can do this, force iron into it, and build your train with a lot of brute force. And that is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so when you're going to set up steel now, you need 60 drills, which we have. You need a bunch of belts and inserters, but uh, I'll go through the essentials. So the essentials are 60 drills, a decent amount of inserters and belts. You're going to need about 100 furnaces, so have a couple hundred, and then as much brick as your inventory can take. And now we're going to set up two iron lanes to do steel. Pick whatever your favorite blueprint is. Uh, so in this case, we'll get to see some of the long ones now. So don't be uh, don't be too hasty when stamping your long blueprint. You'll notice there's two options. There's a long and a long underground. I only use the long underground one when space is really, really tight. So if there wasn't enough plenty of iron, I would use that one. But in this case, there's plenty. You can 
hold shift and left click this blueprint into existence and then drag if you wanted multiple copies of it placed. So power, belt, placing these poles, there's four on one side, four on the other side, which allows an even 15 and 15 drills. I always place the belt and the poles first because then you can do nice drill drags and the drills will hit the poles perfectly and you won't make as many mistakes. Done, connect power, there. One lane done. So again, pull, 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 belt. Pull, 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 belt. Drills, rotate, drills. Standing on the belt might be helpful to you so you don't hit the drill running into yourself. Perfect, two lanes of iron. Uh, little markers like these pipes, just ignore them, just don't build to the right of them. But they will become relevant later and they will be marked with a combinator, just like you see all of this stuff marked. So everywhere you see a combinator, just push your ore in exactly those locations. This little belt array is a little tricky, so if you have to, just Q-click and build it one piece at a time until it's fully built. If you get a little faster, you can just keep smashing R and rotate your way through it. But again, if it's a little complicated, just Q-click like I did here. Um, build this into existence, and now we can drag this coal belt up. Build this into existence, and you can drag the coal here. Connect power, and now we've got the start of our steel. Um, all right, so we're gonna build the top steel first. How goes the run? Mozzie, how you doing? Doing great. Uh, so, again, 100 different strategies on how to build this stuff. Do whatever works for you. I would recommend getting one entire section going first, then the other entire section going, but whatever works for you to build it as fast as possible, if something like this exists without power, just ignore it. It's just for the belt drag. So, oops, again, made a mistake. If you make a mistake and you're not sure if it was fixed or not, restamp. Easy. So furnaces. Now, there is a little trickery here. All of these inserters, um, I'm going to give you the strategy. I'm sure you guys have seen me do this hundreds of times, but all of these inserters are currently facing the direction that you want them to be facing when this is done being built. I'm just building stuff in random order while I talk about this. So there's a little trick to do this fastest, and it's a lot of fun, which you're going to build all of the inserters facing the furnace first. So on this row, they're going to face down into the furnaces. On this row, they're going to face up into the furnaces. So build this entire row first. Get a nice little wave there. Everyone loves the good wave. Then, as you route in these inserters, you're just going to continue down and flip the two that are in the exact line. So it's six inserters, just like that. If you want to go fast, I usually try to listen to the audio cue to hear six placements, but you'll get used to it. Done. Easy as that. So again, furnaces, power, make sure you do this little belt turn at the end here, furnaces, belt, power, facing down, you get a nice wave, and then ups, again, you're replacing the two that are in the exact line. Simple as that. Steel is now basically done. You're just going to set up this steel furnace production. Don't worry that some of these inserters go to nothing. Now, to make steel furnaces, you need brick, you need steel. These two boxes right here are designed to take the buffered brick that you made earlier and fill half the brick into this one, half the brick into this one, so that this is now getting brick and it will get steel from the output of this. If these steel outputs intimidate you, just one at a time. Q-click, 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 Q-click. It's confusing if you look at it and you've never built this before, but just Q-click the items in, no stress, and it's done. 
Now the steel coming out of this box has a chance to be grabbed by these inserters, which will make furnaces, which will end up in this box. The excess steel will run down this belt, head this way, and get put first into blue assemblers, then pump jacks, then the remainder. Um, after you're done the steel setup, we can stamp 1-6. This is one of the more intimidating parts. Uh, this is more. This is one of the more intimidating parts of the run. There's a lot of checklist items here. I've tried to make this as simple as possible so that if you can't remember what to do, if you go to the 1-6 blueprint in the book, there's a full list of every single assembler 2 that needs upgraded. So, in order of priority, roughly, the steel furnace assembler, the five gears, the eight wire, the yellow belt, the yellow inserters, the two pipe assemblers, all the signs, two gears for red wire, power poles and wire, red belt box, and then you're going to get a car, pump jack, power poles, pipe, underground pipe, connect a lane of stone, and go to oil. Simple, right? It's a very complicated split. This is one of the hardest splits in the entire run to do at a high pace. There's a list here. Just go through the list. Do not get intimidated. Anything that is not on this list is blueprinted into existence already. So these are not in the list because it's obvious you're going to build them. They're right there. These are not in the list. It's obvious you're going to build them. They're right there. So pretty much all you're doing during this phase of the run is making sure that these blue assemblers are being made, taking blue assemblers out of here, and build. And just build every blue assembler ghost you see everywhere you can. Now, again, priority order. There is an optimal priority, and I am building roughly in that optimal priority. Um, optimal priority can change. Upgrade first or build first. Yeah, so again, I like to get this upgraded immediately because having more steel furnaces is really good. And every single time that you are in range of this steel furnace box, empty out this box. I've got 24. Upgrade as much of this as you can. Steel is currently... So the way the steel setup works is you're putting in two lanes of iron, but notice how these iron lanes are not moving fully. They're only moving half. That is because the regular furnaces will only use half the iron. This is technically running very inefficiently until it is fully upgraded. So we want to take steel furnaces out of this box and heavily prioritize the upgrading of these furnaces every time you can. Getting as many of these upgraded as fast as possible is extremely helpful. Do not do this. Do not upgrade this entire line and then this entire line. If this furnace is upgraded and this furnace is not upgraded, you've effectively done nothing. You have to upgrade them in pairs. So pair, 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 one iron to one steel. And it cannot be crisscrossed like this. It has to be paired, 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 paired. Done as many as I can, perfect. Um, so yeah, upgrading. Again, if I go into my blueprint book and I look at 1-6, I can see the full list. So let's take a look at it. Steel furnace assembler. We've done it. Five gears and eight wires. So five gears and eight wires. Um, blue assembler, five gear, eight wire. When you upgrade the gear, you have to also upgrade blue inserters. I technically just do the intersection, but hey, just upgrade all of these to blue inserters. Um, assembler twos, so in the mall area, again, if we go back to our little checklist here, because I keep forgetting, what do I upgrade? So we did the wire, now we're gonna do yellow belts, yellow inserters, two pipe assemblers. So again, this is ghosted, we know we have to build it. If it's ghosted, we have to build it. Yellow belt, yellow inserters, two pipe assemblers. Okay, I can't remember what to do next. Uh, all science, two gears for red science, power poles and wire. Okay, easy. I'll come down here. All science. Great. Great. Poles and wires. It says specifically in the print, two gears for red science. These two gear assemblers are feeding red science. So you only need to upgrade these two. All right, now the belt part's a little tricky. This box has been filling for a little bit. You're gonna empty this box of gears. You're gonna empty this box of belt, which it has way more than it should right now because we're a little slow. We're gonna put all of our gears, every gear you have in your inventory in this box, 
and maybe three to four hundred belt. So this box right here is providing gear and belt to this. This is also getting gear from here, and you're starting to buffer red belt. Perfect. Uh, let's come up here. We can build this section. Now, I like to go into this and put half my inventory of splitters here. Seven is the bare minimum. I'm just going to put my whole inventory in. If you have inventory issues, this is a good point to go over. So there's a lot of things you can do. If you have an iron ore, put it in an iron furnace. If you have iron plates, put it in this buffer. If you have copper plates, put them in this buffer. If you have garbage, so just garbage, you have stuff you don't want. This magical box here that has furnaces in it is a garbage box. You can just dump whatever trash is in your inventory that you do not want to hold so you can free up some space. Perfect. If you have, yeah, extra wood should be that we chopped earlier should go into this box for pulls. Uh, there's a nice little pattern here where you build this assembler and you build this over and then this goes under. This is typically the order that it's done in, so I'm doing it in that order. This assembler is literally just here for that drag. Okay, so this box right here, you're going to investigate. Once it is at 14 pump jacks, 10 is enough. 14 is the limit. So 10 to 14, you're probably going to wait till it gets to 14. Take the 14 pump jacks out and then stamp 1-7. With 1-7 stamped, you are not going to build this stuff immediately. Your first task is to go and get oil. So you want your underground pipe, your regular pipe. That is a lot. You do not need that much. Um, yeah, like a thousand is plenty, plenty. Underground pipe, 150 minimum is a nice number. Make sure you get power poles. So again, your shopping list right now. Power poles, underground pipe, Regular pipe, 14 pump jacks. You are going to go set up stone and oil. Any extra yellow inserters you have, as always, can be put into this chest if you have extra yellow inserters. Um, oh yes, you need a car it's to empty them out to get engines. And then you're going to pick up some steel, pick up some plates, and you're gonna build a car. So typically this section was in the last blueprint. I just didn't build it because I was a little slow. Right, so you saw I just did a nice drag of arms there. This is why I build pull first, because then you get some nice drags. Same thing happens here. Pull first, drag the blue. So once red is in, you can drag blue. Once blue is in, you can drag red, whatever order you want. This little assembler I put down just to make a car. It's literally just here for me to... F did I not research car? Oh my god. Research car immediately. You want car right away. <laughs> it's fine. We You do have to build this part right now. So we can build this while we're waiting. So what I'm building right now is stone processing. You might have noticed I had no furnaces left. Instead of going to get more, I just built some of the steel furnaces, which instantly gave me furnaces. Pro tip. Ah! Power... So this is all processing of brick for more steel furnaces and other things. And it's also going to push coal down here for plastic nice. later. And you're going to start buffering coal and stone. All right. Now that car is researched, I'm going to put the assembler down. I'm going to make a car. Excess from the car can go into making a couple of pumps. Because if the oil is far away, you might want to pump it once or twice. So I'm going to make two pumps. I have to connect stone here. So I'm going to drag this belt out. And we're going to go find some stone. The best stone we have is this one, so we're going to have to pick up all of this, which is going to be extremely painful, because these boxes are full. <laughs> Alright, we have a super tiny stone patch here that absolutely sucks, and we have to milk 30 drills out of it. If we can't get 30 drills out of it, we're going to settle for 28. On stone, and pretty much only stone, we'll be okay with 28 at this part in the run. Uh, again, I assume people have a basic understanding of Factorio, but once you have Mining Prod 1, you uh, essentially can get a full lane out of 28 drills instead of 30. So I will assume most people watching will know that. And that setting up lanes is not foreign knowledge to most people that are going to try 100%. Literally the same thing I did last time. I got two lanes here that both function, but they're not balanced. I'm going to make a splitter. I'm going to make them kiss. And I'm going to send it that way. Done. 
thing. Okay, we're gonna set up oil now. Um, some people in the past, myself included, have gone pipe first. I always go power line first now. So bring a power line and drive your way down to oil. I can see it to the south. Sometimes your oil might be super far away. There's a lot of variance in oil, but the distance I'm driving right now is, is pretty close. I would consider this a close oil patch. Now there's a few things you want to make note of. See this imaginary line? This is the base. If my oil was here, no good. There's oil here. The base is going to continue up and be up here somewhere. Possibly no good. So again, just be careful that wherever you get oil, again, your power plant's going to be here. Oil here is no good. There's a lot of places that are no good. Ideally, it is kind of back here somewhere where you know it's safe or possibly squeezed in this little line here. Because the power, imagine the power plant extending here and the base extending here. If you had oil in here, it's definitely safe. Again, these are all reasons why taking a screenshot is good and why having a cardboard cutout of your base is good, because you'll be able to make note of the oil you're gonna use. For now, we're gonna use this oil. 18,000% um, is plenty. If the oil has seven to 10,000%, that's a little bit less than ideal. Something you can do is go into the blueprint book and go into pipes and pump jacks, and you can grab this pump jack blueprint it will put speed mods in the pump jacks and you can drag it around and you can place pump jacks with speed modules in them and that will boost your low oil yield to be enough for now this is plenty so we're just going to q click these and build them normally you have 14 pump jacks do not even bother checking how much is in these just build all 14 of them or 10 or whatever amount you have Closer to the center, we'll have more. But again, if, if on the map it had plenty and you're putting 14 jacks down, almost certainly you will be fine. You do not even have to yeah, check. Derek. When you leave, use an underground pipe. Drive with your underground pipe. Just like this, driving away. You could count mentally in your head how far you've gone and eventually place a pump at every, like, 20 underground pipe pairs. You could count as you go. 17... 18 and then let's place a pump again for newer runners i don't think that placing or not placing a pump is going to have a huge impact on the success or lack thereof of your run uh because the speed that you're going at probably is not going to ruin your entire run if you're not like peaking the oil super hard um Something to learn is oil routing. So you'll notice I, I chose when I got to this iron patch, I didn't want to cover it up because I'm going to need it later. I routed to the front and then up because generally it pushed into the front of your base. It's very easy to spaghetti around pipe. So running along the front line is pretty simple. And then when we get here, we're just going to, we'll add that second pump and then connect like that. And we've got our oil done. Okay, you'll notice that this has water on it because this needs water. So let's do that. All right, when we get to the water, pump, pipe, water's running. I typically at this point leave seven. You should have seven pumps remaining in your inventory right now. I will just set them up like this because this six pipe connection right here, or sorry, seven pipe connection right here is eventually gonna have to get water, which you're gonna get right here. Just put them there now. It's in your inventory anyway. And you now have oil and water. All right. Uh, it's time to make oil, plastic, red chips, blue science, and bots. This part of the run is super exciting. Because when we get bots, it's basically done, right? Having bots, they take over. They do the rest of the run for you. I like to do this pipes first. So pipes, power, pipe, 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 power. Once you get near the right side of this, I understand that a lot of newer players get very confused about the underground complicated piping here. Pipe all the way to the undergrounds. Top one's going to come around. Just take your time. Q-click. Q-click. Q-click when you're unsure. There's no rush. I can't really go into heavy detail about what to do here. Just Q-click and place the entities and take your time. Just visualize it slowly. It is a little confusing when you first look at the pipes. I've tried to take out unnecessary pipes 
Right now, I'm just dragging power here. All of this has to be built right now. I'm just making my way down to here to grab 12 chem plants, 12 refineries, and four storage tanks. 12 chem plants, 12 refineries, four storage tanks. You can also grab your blue assemblers and your red arms because you're going to need a lot of those two things. Um, so again, priority here. We got 12 refineries, 12 chem plants. We want to set up plastic. Oops. And sulfur. I'll place sulfur. Okay, sulfur's working. Make sure this is working. Sulfur's working. Good. Plastic. Make sure it is working. Plastic is working. Sulfur is working. Make sure they are working. Many new runners and many experienced runners like myself will just set up as many ghosts as they see and then walk away and they assume it's fine. You might have forgotten this inserter. You might have forgotten a single piece of pipe. Check that it's working. Plastic is working. Sulfur is working. Now we're going to build red chips. Oops. Place every pole correctly and do not modify them. I'm going to show you the curse logic in some of the poles here in a second. Boom, boom. Okay. Red chips. Now we're going to do our line for blue and for engines. Again, every single stage of this blueprint up to bots, which we're still in, is very simple. You're going to build everything you see every single time. Do not forget this wire. People forget this pole right here a lot. Build this pole. It's going to add logic to these belts. It is important that that logic goes in or stuff will not work. Build every single ghost. Let's just say that I'll show you something to find your mistakes here in a second. I'm going to leave that one ghost unbuilt. I didn't notice it. I kept building and I didn't notice that ghost. And in my head, okay, I see these. I'm going to build these. I'm going to keep going. And I made a mistake back there. I didn't put a ghost in. And you guys don't have chat to help you find that mistake because you're streaming offline and just recording this. But you want to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. There. Uh, in this deconstruction yeah, book, man. in the deconstruction book, in the beginner prints, you'll see a ghost deconstructor which you can put on your bar and then you could if you wanted to highlight the base and notice that i haven't built seven blue arms three belts two undergrounds two poles a red arm and a red box and i could locate where those things are so that decon planner shows a bit more clearly in map view does it really oh yeah you're right the map view is way better thank you high speed yeah so i can see right now Everything that's missing shows up as a very clean, easy to see red dot. Perfect. Done. Okay. I want to review this circuitry here because people are going to be confused about what this circuitry is doing and why currently the belt is moving or sometimes is not moving. So this circuitry is combined with this circuitry and it is reading the amount of red chips that are here and the amount of stuff that is here. And it is only letting stuff pass through here if it is satisfied with the amount of chips going to blue science. It's something along those lines. It's confusing and silly. Don't worry about it. Just build everything. It'll work. Right now, blue science is making it through just like it should. All is well. Um, 